All right, this should hold me for a while. Today, we're gonna take this cherry wood, which by the way, smells really good. And we're gonna make a swim bait, a slightly larger swim bait than I generally make. It's gonna be like six and a half inches long. And I want it to look, well, like this. I want it to look like this, like a mackerel. And this is my best rendition of uh, a blue mackerel or a slimy as the Aussies call them. And they're a pretty popular bait fish wherever they're found. I like it because it's such a bullet shaped fish. It's really almost a natural for a trolling swim bait. Something you can troll behind a boat going relatively fast. And my attention was for this lure to be symmetrical top and bottom. If you were to draw in a center line, well, let's go ahead and do it. Then the idea is that the area above and the area below that line are equal. That really simplifies your design and almost guarantees that the thing will pull straight and won't want to blow out on you at higher speeds. Now it might take a little bit of a quicker retrieve to get it to swim, but it'll definitely swim at really high speeds. All right, this looks like a good piece. I think I can get six and a half inches out of this thing pretty easily. This time, since it's so important to have symmetry from top to bottom, I'm gonna draw a center line and then I'm gonna use some drawing curves to get in perfect symmetry. I like that shape. I think it's going to look pretty nice. Now I need to decide where I want my cuts. And as I decide where to put my cuts, I should probably get into a little bit of an explanation of how I make my decision. There's a couple of things that come into play. One is the hydrodynamics. Where do I put my cuts so I can sort of maximize my chances that there'll be enough turbulence near the joint to make this thing swim? And the other one is that where do I put my joints so that I can easily place my uh, hinge hardware and my hook hangers. And on a lure like this, where I'm planning to have two cuts, I wanna have my first cut one third of the way back, and then I'll divide what's left by half, and that's where my second cut will be. And it wouldn't be an engineered angler video if we didn't have some kind of flaw in the wood. This little crack right here we'll have to fix with some crazy glue. A few drops of crazy glue and a spritz with the accelerator. And it's good to go. And with a little bit of creative sketching, I've got pretty much the taper I want at the head. And um, again, I'm going to have to eyeball this as I carve it back. And actually I won't be carving, I'm going to be using the sander. With this new disc, I'm able to get a lot more material a lot quicker off this thing. So we're getting closer to the actual shape. I need to take a little bit more off on this side. And I don't know which is right or left or top or bottom. And that's a good thing because this thing is supposed to be symmetric. I need to make sure that this really is the widest point and it's looking pretty good right now. And then I need to start taking off the edges.
All right, so I'm making some pretty quick work with this new disc, and I think the rest of this is gonna be a little bit tedious and boring to watch. So I'll get back to you after I got this thing closer to the uh, correct shape. All right, so I've got it pretty close, but I wanted to show you just one little miscalculation on my part. The, uh, the wood, the raw wood actually tapered down quite a bit. Uh, it wasn't a nice rectangle. It really didn't leave me enough material to make it round. At the nose, or near the nose, it's nice and rounded right there on the side. Back here, there's a flat spot, and that's on both spots. And it's not gonna make a difference in how it actually performs, but it'll be a, a little bit of a, an aesthetic letdown, I think. From here on in, I think I'm gonna do it with some hand sanding. I'm just gonna get a sanding block. Got it pretty symmetric in both directions and I just need to get it nice and smooth. And this is my least favorite part. I'll see you in a little while. Whew. All right, so I got a little bit frustrated with the fact that the side was kind of flat and still had a little bit of sort of remnant saw cut marks. And I wasn't gonna be able to sand those out unless I sanded it even flatter. So I added some glazing putty, which is kind of bodywork stuff. And it's just, essentially it's a fairing compound. It dries really fast and pretty hard and will sand down super smooth. So I'm gonna sand down this other side and then we'll Start sanding with a finer grit and get this nice and rounded and smooth. There's just a little bit of that stuff left right at the bottom of the flat spot and that creates a more rounded body. I need to decide how much of the details I'm actually going to put in this. And I am going to go ahead and carve a gill plate. But here's a picture of an actual blue mackerel and you can see there really isn't a whole lot of detail. It looks like one big very flat uh, gill plate. And that's really all I intend to do. I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a little line carved in to outline the mouth. And of course, I gotta put the eye sockets in. I think we'll start with the eye sockets. Now I'm just gonna transfer this little simple drawing to the other side and we'll start carving. and this will take me a little while, so I'll get back to you when I'm closer to being done with this carving. And you know, here's a little tip. These sanding buffs uh, are really handy. They're small, they fit on a Dremel, and they come in a few different grits. I think four different grits. Uh, they're all color-coded, uh, and I really like taking them and just knocking those really kind of sharp edges off where you drill the eye socket and do the, um, the carving. Now it's kind of subtle, but I think you can see it around the eye that it's just a little less sharp. I think it looks a little nicer. All right, now I got my cut lines. I can do the scary part. Just a matter of shape of the insides now. All right, this one is just about right. Just got to do a little bit of hand sanding to uh, smooth it out a little bit. Uh, now I just need to make the sort of corresponding round part 
on the middle section. And I'll do the same on the end. And then by doing a little bit of test fitting, I can refine it and I can get that shape really close to the radius of the inside. My goal is to just get this general shape that I have and sand it smooth so I don't have any weird marks and chamfers and so on so that when I paint it, none of that will show through. So I'll get back to you when I get closer to that goal. I've got the knuckle part and the socket part sanded down really nicely, you can see, but I added a little bit more of that putty to kind of cover up a couple of spots that I kind of messed up. I'm going to give it a really glossy clear coat with UV clear coat. And the next step after that is to silver plate this thing. But that's going to have to be another day. It's late. I got to work tomorrow and I only have so much time to do this. So we'll be back. All right, so we're back at it. I've gone ahead and drawn in the locations of where the cuts are more or less on this thing. And I just wanted to show you that my plan is to have my rear hook eye right at the end of that second segment. This way it kind of simplifies the structure because now I know that my connection from the head to the middle section has to be pretty solid because there's a hook connected to it. But the second segment doesn't have to be structural. It just needs to be solid enough and allow for uh, plenty of movement. So if you don't know what I mean by uh, a hinge plate and pin uh, arrangement, this is one here, this uh, swim bait I made uh, in a couple of years ago maybe. And you can see there's a plate coming out of the front that's fixed and it goes into a slot and it has a pin through it. And that's what I plan to do on that first segment. In the second segment, I'm just simply going to use a twist in, twist eye uh, with a pretty heavy wire and then a, a slot and a pin through that wire. I'm going to drill a hole right here on the front segment to accept that first plate. And then I'm going to glue that in with some resin. And I'm going to use this uh, 5 16 bit to get this hole drilled. That should be enough. So the plate will fit in there, something like that, and we'll get glued in. And of course, the next step here would be to cut a slot on the second piece. And after a bit of measuring um, on my uh, plate, I know how deep I want it in here. Uh, and so I was able to mark the spot where I want the pinhole to go in. And I'm going to drill a little pilot hole. This is actually going to end up being about an eighth inch hole, but... So let's just do a quick dry fit. I'll drop this pin in here. And that should do it. That gives us a nice range of motion and not too much exposed hardware. So I think it's gonna look pretty good. And since I'm using this as glue, I'm just gonna eyeball how much I need since it's really so little. And I have to be a little careful because this stuff expands when it sets and I really don't want it to overflow because if it overflows, then I'll be doing a lot of sanding. In the meantime, I've got the uh, little wire loop, little twist eye embedded in here. That's not glued in yet. And I've got the slot cut on the tail piece. And that'll go like that. Should give me a pretty nice range of motion. Now I just need to drill the hole. All right, so I've got somewhat of an assembly here. I did a dry fit of the hinges just to see the range of motion. And I think it looks pretty good without having a whole lot of uh, exposed hardware. I think that is gonna be pretty nice. In past uh, videos, I've showed you how I figure out where to put this eye. And that's because usually when uh, we design a lure, 
there isn't the same amount of area above the center line as there is below the center line. And because of hydrodynamics and the drag uh, of the water going by the lure, you can get asymmetric forces. So in other words, the lure might swim at slow speeds, but as you increase the speed of retrieval, uh, it might have more drag on the bottom or more drag on top, and that'll cause the lure to want to rotate. But on this lure, since I made it perfectly symmetric, I don't have to worry about that. I just need to put it at the furthest point to the front. And that's the beauty of making a symmetric uh, swim bait. It just simplifies the location of that eye, which is absolutely critical and gives you the best chance to get a really good swim. because I need to get all the sanding done and have it ready uh, to put a good clear coat on it. To do that, I need uh, to know how much weight in hardware. So 4.09 grams in hardware. I know that the uh, little aluminum plate that I put in here weighed 0.89. So I'll just add those and write them on the board. This way I have them for future calculations. So the next step will be to weigh the three parts of the body so I know how much wood there is, and I know the density of this wood. So with that information, I can calculate how much weight I have to add to the body to make it sink and have it sink relatively fast. Since I want this to be a trolling lure, it has to be relatively heavy to be pretty stable because I'm probably gonna be towing it at maybe four or five knots. So I'm not gonna get into the specific calculations. What I'm gonna do is take the density of the wood and knowing the weight of all the wood, I'll be able to just easily calculate what the volume of this wood is. All right, I'm ready to go ahead and glue in all the um, screw in eyes, but I've got one more hole to drill. And that's the hole for the actual belly hook. And wherever I can, I like to try to do double duty with that particular screw in eye, because on this one, that eye is gonna go right down here. And that's just below the um, hinge plate. And I wanna lock in that hinge plate. And whenever I can lock in two things at once, I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole through here and that hole will go through the hinge plate. So when I insert this little screw eye, it'll do double duty. It'll hold in that hinge plate and it'll hold the hook. That's a nice little trick because whenever they're both under load, they kinda lock each other in. All right, to glue in the twist eyes, I'm gonna use five minute epoxy and a little tiny Ziploc bag. And I'm gonna use this because I'm gonna put it in there. I'll actually need the uh, epoxy to mix it and I'll use this as a piping bag. That did the trick. Probably mixed a little more than I needed, but that's okay. All right, so while the glue is setting, let's talk a little, a little bit about how I'm gonna add weight to this thing. That's the weight of the body. That means all three parts, 37.82 grams. This is the density of the wood. It's 0.67 grams per cubic centimeter. And these are the weights of the hardware. That's the pins, the screw eyes, and then here uh, is the weight of the two hooks that I'm gonna put on it. To get the volume of the body, I took the weight of the body and divided it by the density of the wood, and you get 56.4 centimeters cubed. So that's the volume. That means that it's gonna displace 56.4 centimeters cubed of water. And that means that if I want it to sink, it has to be heavier than that. And that would include the weight of the body and the weight of all the hardware, basically the finished product. So to figure out 
how much weight I have to add to it, I'll take the weight that I know it will be. That means the body plus the hardware and the hooks. And that gives me 66.49 grams. So the difference between 66 and 56, we can estimate to be 10 grams. So that means I need to add 10 grams to the lure to get it just to be neutral, but I want it to sink. So I'm going to add about 25% more than 10. So 12.5 grams is my target weight of lead. So let's weigh out some split shots. All right, here's my little mini scale and I've got some split shot right here. Each one of these weighs about four and a quarter. So I'm going to need three of these and it comes out to 12.86. I think that's good. That'll make it a little heavier than I was looking at, but I want it to be heavy. So let's find places to drill holes for this. All right, so I'm going to put one of those balls in the belly of the head and the other two in the center piece. One here and one forward. And I'm not going to put anything on the tailpiece. All right, time to fill. And I like using a little bit of the sawdust, the shavings from the from uh, actually drilling it, and then I'll put a few drops of crazy glue on that. And I find that a lot easier to sand than the uh, baking soda and crazy glue trick. And I'll spritz that with a little bit of accelerator and we'll be good to go. So I'm just now cutting in the slot where the tail feather is going to be and where those little ridges are going to be that run right at this tail section. Let me show you what it'll look like with those little ridges in. And hopefully you can see that. And when I glue it in, it'll look a little better. But I'll show you how I made these little ridges later on in the build. All right, it's a new day and it was a chilly morning this morning. You can see the mist on the lake. I've got all three of the lure parts in here. I stuck them in the little oven to dry the little bit of a seal coat that I put on it. I just sprayed it with some Minwax polyacrylic because I really want to try this thing before I get too far along and overcommit to a lure that's not going to work very well. Although I'm pretty confident. All right, I stuck them all in here and they should all be good and dry. All right, I'm in the paint booth now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a really light sanding with some very, very fine uh, sandpaper, and then I'm going to paint them white. All right, we're down here at the dock and I'm really lucky that I can just come down here and test the lure in the middle of uh, building it. So I've put these little weights on there to simulate the hooks. They're a little bit lighter than the hooks, but they should do the trick. Uh, but it'll probably sink a little faster once the actual hooks are on there. So let's go ahead and hook up. Well, it sinks about as fast as I thought it would. Pretty interesting action. Looks like it's going to have a lot of action. Oh, big wide swimming action. It's got a pretty energetic action. even if I bring it in pretty fast. Has kind of a big action, but very stable. Let me try reeling it in slow and see what it looks like. Still swims at a slow retrieve, which is a good sign.
All right. So I'm pretty happy with the action. It's pretty bold. It's got a, a, a deep undulation and as long as it's stable, that's not a bad thing. And what that tells me is that I put my cuts for my joints in the right place. Now when I put the tail fin on here, that's going to subdue the action quite a bit. So I'm glad I'm starting out with a pretty energetic swim action. Well, this video is running long already, so I'm going to end it here and we'll pick up where we left off and finish this lure on the next video. So thanks to everybody for watching. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, hit it. It really helps out. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And I'll see you all uh, next Friday. All right, as a bonus, I'm gonna show you the action on my triple belly. This is a lure I designed probably five or six years ago.